We've added aquaponics as a short part of many of the classes. We talk about animals. Yeah, we talk about almost everything. Um, everywhere that they have done a permaculture design, um, the air quality has come up. Um, because essentially you're going back to what is actually natural. Um, it may not be entirely natural for that area, but if you can get the plants to grow and work, um, they, we have what we call plant gills, and that's plants that get along together. You know, there are plants that don't get along together, so you, you separate those out. Um, in our homestead, uh, for example, we build, uh, we have 52 acres, and uh, we built a 4,000 square foot house out of 40 foot shipping containers, two stories high. And um, you can see that if you want to write this down at um, a, a picture of it on oneseedling.com. Or you can go. Seedling. I'm sorry? Seedling. Seedling. S E D L I N G. Or you can see it at our, um, at our other site, which is Reliance Community Farms.com. That's all one word. R E L I A N C E Community Farms. And you can see a picture of all the construction and everything. And water is another big issue. Yes. Water, um, water, and we are going to give a water class, uh, and it will actually be part of the design course. That class will be free, and it will be on. Um, Smith, let me look at the calendar. Um, and also, the water, was, uh, the water class is here on the 19th because water is another big portion. Right. And then the aquaponics class <laughs> right. is on the 26th. <laughs> right. And we're going to do a short, uh, what we call a short aquaponics class. Um, it will be on this system out here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick run through here because we're going to um, go out there and show it to you. And, um, and I kind of want you to understand how it happens. Then we're going to do the long course. And the long course is actually going to be. Um, probably a full day course and when you finish that you'll be able to build your own system um, either a six or an eight barrel what we'll call a six or eight barrel system um, and with that single system if you manage it right you can feed your entire family for the same price as your kids nightlight runs the one that blows not the one that blows <laughs> So it's, it's a very, very inexpensive system. It looks very, very complicated, and it is not. And once, once you see it, once you see it in action, you're like, oh my goodness, why did I not think of that? Okay, aquaponics. Aqua comes from fish, from aquaculture, raising fish. Ponics, from hydroponics, raising plants, using both organic and inorganic. And aquaponics is raising vegetables using fish, affluents as a nutrient, and gravel as a medium. There's no soil in our system. I know, and that goes against all thinking, but um, except for the uh, cabbage worms that beat my cabbage out there, and it's too late for cabbage anyhow, um, you'll see how much growth that this system has done. Um, you can produce five times as much per square foot as dirt farming or intensive gardening. It uses one-eighth of the water as conventional gardening. I came out here to the system um, right after lunch, and it was about 15 gallons down after two weeks of running unaided. Um, it, it is a very, very simple system and it runs by itself. Uh, does not deplete the soil as it uses none. Raises both protein and vegetables. You can eat the fish um, and, and the vegetables are using the same power requirements. Doesn't require lights. Um, does it not use commercial fish food so it doesn't deplete the ocean resources. It does not pollute and it recycles materials and construction that would go into landfills. Um, this particular system out here, we scrounged it from dumpsters and construction sites. So it's a very economical system. Uh, in this particular system here, we are not running fish currently. Um, I, I've got to get the duckweed, which is the fish food, going. And, and we are running compost tea for rabbit. Literally. So, you know, affluent is affluent. <laughs> Just imagine those rabbits swimming around in there. Okay, the first. Uh, one that we can determine uh, that used aquaponics was James DeCorn. Uh, he did it on top of a mountain at 9,000 feet in New Mexico. And um, he used a little bit different system. Um, he used uh, the half a barrel grow bed here. They were metal barrels and not plastic. 
and then his uh, nutrients came from here. It was actually a two pump system and a little inefficient, but it worked. This is one of the few photographs of the inside of it. This was the fish tank and he put his grow barrels over here. This was just after construction. Uh, in 1976, I did a thing called linear aquaponics, and I apologize but because it had to lay flat and didn't translate well, but here's what happens. Um, the water is pumped out of the windmill, and following the blue line, it came down. It ran, it, uh, ran through the rabbit cage uh, in a two-inch uh, PVC tube with slops cut out in it, so the rabbits had absolutely fresh water all the time. There was no danger of it stopping up. Um, then there was a T, and it ran, um, the T ran the other part off into the duck uh, pen, which had a, a little pond and it, a, a little 8x8 eight eight pond. Um, the water ran off of that pond and teed into another line here. Meanwhile, after it fell from the rabbits, it dropped into the tank here, and I raised catfish in a tank here using the uh, rabbit pellets as food for the fish from just one rabbit cage. And the rest of it dropped to our uh, pig, which was uh, totally unauthorized. We were three blocks from City Hall, downtown of Childress, Texas, and I never got caught. <laughs> I never got caught. It was the great pig conspiracy. Because my neighbor knew all about it, but he was, he was going to get part of the pork, and he was throwing food scraps through a little hole in the side of the pen. <laughs> pen building. But I never got caught. I got caught on the rabbits, but I never got caught on the deal. And, and they couldn't do much about the rabbits. But um, the thing about this being linear is it didn't have a solid, what we call a solid return. It ran from point A to point B. Even though um, so this was all nutrient rich and it went down into the garden and there was only about 60 feet and the well was only about 20 feet deep and we were in deep, deep sand. So it was like a giant sand filter. It, the water actually ran right straight back in to where I was pumping it out. And I did that in 1976. This is a system um, that is in Virginia. Um, this is what we call the S and S type system. The S and S type system uses two pumps. Um, you have your fish tank here, and um, I'm not knocking the S and S system. I'm just going to point you some shortcomings of it. One, the water had to be pumped up here in the ceiling and over to here, and then down to the grow beds. That was the first really big problem. And anybody who knows anything about plumbing can see that one coming. The second one was, and, and I'm as guilty as anybody else because it took me two years before the light bulb went off, they were using a series of grids here, uh, and the grids had small quarter-inch holes in it, and the water came out. Okay, so what was happening is pumping fish poo off the bottom, and we all know that part of it are solids or semi-solids, and immediately start stopping up all these little things. And so you got to knock that thing apart once a week and uh, run a bore brush down through it and clean all those little holes. And I won't tell you the bad things I said when I actually stupidly glued one of these grids together. <laughs> and then discovered that I had to clean it. Okay. And then the second problem with this was, and you can see this, this pipe here, all of the water ran down into this gravel bed, which, which was a neat way to drain it, except for it drained down to a sump and had to be pumped back in, which was the second pump. Well, you can imagine all this underground piping here running solids out of a uh, garden bed was not the neatest idea in the world. But even given all those limitations, you can see the good, luxuriant growth in here. Um, this is one I built in 1998. Uh, it was also an SNS system. You can see I solar powered it and wind powered it. This is the inside, and here I was still using the grids. Um, the light bulb hadn't quite gone off, and if you look very carefully, you can see the little blue around all these joints that I glued. Yeah, well. Um, this is some of the details of it. Uh, it required two pumps. Um, I'm going to go back to here. This is the fish tank, and the water was actually pumped up and across to over here. And then it actually came back into the, from these three drains here, and you can see the water coming back up with another pump. So it was a two-pump system. Even given that, um, it was a fantastic system. So I re when I realized all the problems in it, then um, there were some secondary problems. I wanted to heat the greenhouse. So if you look at these two vents here, what I did was I came in and put piping underneath, four-inch piping underneath all of this. Um, 
this being the outlet and this being the intake inside the greenhouse which was going over that and so we were using the natural heat of the earth to both heat and cool. In the summertime it cooled it, in the wintertime it did. And it all ran off of a couple of um, computer fans and a little one watt panel. Okay, so I'm still using the grids, but at least I'm backing down, and I'm backing <laughs> down to this system here, which was a whole lot easier to do.